Welcome to the Red V TV show, supported by Chapel House Cars for the 2024 season. Saints are only playing on Sunday, Kev, but the club have made sure that our Friday night has a good dose of rugby league with the announcement that big Alex Walmsley has just signed a new two-year deal at the club that will keep him here until the end of the 2026 season at the earliest. A big announcement for a big player. I think it's an absolute no-brainer. Um, given we've seen how he's, how he's performed over the last couple of weeks um, and obviously with a couple of our young props coming through, we're not entirely sure how Iggy Parsi is going to come back from his injury and whether he'll be the same player, whether he'll be here next year. You almost need the stability of a senior prop man and that is certainly what Alex Walmsley gives us. Yeah, I think it's very easy when you start um, looking at contracts to that, that are coming up for renewal to say, well, we need to make sure that we're refreshing the squad. You need to keep, as you say, that stability, that consistency through. Obviously, this deal hasn't been based on the past couple of weeks where he has been our standout prop. Um, it, it's based on what the club needs, what Alex needs. Um, and at the minute, it looks like the right decision, doesn't it? Because as you say... You're always looking forward as well as a club for who's going to be on your books. Probably 2026 is, is on the cards at the club. They've got a, a a board somewhere with who they expect to be in or what type of player they're going to be looking for. And whether that be giving George Delaney time to take over as one of the more senior props, whether it's being able to bed in your likes of Noah Stevens or Brett Bailey, who's gone on loan to Whitehaven this week, or someone coming up through the academy, you need this, I'm sorry I'm going to use this, Alex, but this father figure on the field to look after these young lads and to make sure that they have got the right grounding when they tech to the field for Saints. Yeah, he, he said in, in the um, the press release that's obviously come out, um, obviously coming into the game quite late, he came through a different route, um, only joined... Uh, and joined the professional game at 22. So he probably hasn't got quite as much um, petrol out the tank as many other players, which hopefully will will stand him in good stead to go forward over the next couple of years. Yeah, definitely. And it, it might be that, I know he's destructive and he, he, he does the big first thing, then comes on and, and tries to kind of skittle tired forwards in his second stint. It may be that when we get to 2026, his role has changed maybe a little bit. You don't know how it's going to go over time. But you know what? It's Matty Lees and George Delaney who are starting. And Alex Walmsley comes on to settle us down, to give us that burst of energy just before half time. A lot can happen in a couple of years, can't it? Yeah. I'll, I'll admit, I at the start of the season, I was a little bit worried um, when I was watching Al's performances. I just thought there was a little bit of a drop off from previous seasons. Um, I'm quite glad to say that the performances against Leeds, especially, um, and Wigan, I realised that I was wrong. Um, it probably just takes him a little bit longer to get going um, and into the swing of things, but he's still one of the premier props in the Super League for me. And given that there's not a wealth of props out there at other clubs to, to go at and try and to sign... It is the right uh, right decision to give him a new deal. You can you can see Wigan doing similar as well, can't you? They're obviously realising that there isn't a lot out there on the market, so they're tying down a lot of their big names as well. Yeah, I think, that, again, that goes back to you having a look at, as you say, what's about the, what's best for the club, what's best for Alex. And if there isn't anybody that we've identified just yet, or we think that our younger lads are the future for us, then... Yeah, of course you keep Alex in, in situ. And what you say about him at, at the start of the year, sometimes I feel like I don't give Alex the, the raps that he deserves, where he'll have a great performance. It's almost, is it just expected that he's skittling people? Is it just expected that he's making 100, 150, 200 metres in games? Possibly so. And then when he does it, you go, ah, oh, well, you know what, that was a decent enough performance. When actually he's been 
and I know stats aren't everything, but statistically, he's carried us forward an awful lot more. Yeah. And by the time that this deal uh, winds up, he'll have done 14 years at the club. Um, he's, he spoke in the press about essentially he feels like a, a one club man. I know he's done um, that initial year at Batley, but essentially as a full time professional, he's, he's never been anywhere else. Um, and he also talks that potentially um, that he feels that he could potentially go on after the end of 2026. So he, he isn't someone who's just um, taking this as a final payday. He'll, he'll want over the next two years to prove that he's worthy of, of staying on longer and, and having the uh, the longevity of a James Roby or a, a Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook. And that's to do with him only starting really at 22, isn't it? Um, the, the ability to be able to do it. And as I say, I'm sure Alex would love to be still the starting prop come 2026 and looking for a new deal in 2027 as well. But if his role's changed, his role's changed. It's still going to be handy to have about the group. Yeah, I'm just looking at the amount of appearances. 278 appearances for the club. Um, might just miss out on hitting 300 this year. Um, certainly will at the start of next season. Um, for a for a prop forward at Saints, that is a tremendous effort, and that comes despite obviously that long term neck injury that he had a, a good few years ago as well. He could have had an awful lot more. Yeah, he's had a couple of he's had a couple of knocks, hasn't he? He's had a couple around the knees as well. Um, so it could have been um, could have been a lot less. But you know what? He's he's still our man who you look forward to him coming back onto the park in that second stint and getting us forward when we're under the cosh. Um, and you know what? Good on him for getting the two years. Just looking at this photo here, uh, that is a caption competition waiting to happen. <laughs> is it John Benison saying, you've stood on me foot? <laughs> is he saying that try was orgasmic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more brilliant camera work, I'm assuming it's from Bernard Platt. You'd imagine so, yeah. Yeah. Right, Kev, that is the big news. And we're going to be relying on Al this weekend, aren't we? We are going to be relying on him this weekend. Obviously, Matty Lee's uh, serving the second of that two-game ban that he got uh, after Good Friday. Um one change as well in the squad were Jake Wingfield, as said by Paul Wellens on Saints TV, has got a shoulder injury, so we'll be missing for a couple of weeks. He drops out and our number three, Wonga Blake, comes back into contention. You say Wonga Blake in contention. I believe he needs to go straight back in this week. Um, he'll have a point to prove after being left out um, and playing reserves last weekend. But what I said in the in the fan reaction after the at the Catalan game, I I feel we don't gain anything from Sioni Matauti here at centre, but we lose a lot in the forwards. Um, so the obvious choice will be to put Wonga straight in at centre, won't it? Definitely. If you're missing uh, Jake Wingfield, who I'm gutted for Jake that he's picked up an injury because I think he started this season fantastically well. Um, I think if you're losing somebody like Jake, you've got to put Sione back in the forwards. You've got to. Um, and Blake comes into the centres. A hundred percent for me. This is now the you've you've gone and played for the reserves and had a good eighty minutes for them. Now's the time to show what you can do. And we're not. I'm not looking necessarily for flip passes, for going eighty meters, for tracking back unbelievably quickly if Matty Ashton, Matt Dufty makes a break. What I'm looking for is effort and intensity. That's it. Show why you want to be on the field. Uh, yeah. That's all from, from absolutely anybody, and that's all I want to see from Blake. And when you when you look at it, we, we've obviously Tommy Makeson out of contract and him having them really strong links that he might not be here next season. Wonga in a 12-month deal. Comrade Harrell, um, out of contract also at the end of the season. There's players playing for their Saints futures as well. Yeah, hasn't Curry got a one plus one? So I don't know if he's got a one plus one. But, but I think that's uh, in the club's favor. It's in the club's favour, though, isn't it? If he has regard regardless, though, yeah, you've got Makinson out of contract, you've got Blake who 
is out of contract. You've got Coddy, who is potentially out of contract. So that leaves you with out of your starting numbers or the ones you would expect to start anyway. It leaves you with Mark Percival and John Benison. And I know, listen, there's, you can't get away from the, the sounds of people wanting to see T. Ritson. Um, it, it, it leaves you in that unenviable position that you're pretty much rebuilding or potentially rebuilding a back line there. Yeah, just looking, Conrad Harrell's uh, the option for a fourth um, year is in the club's favour for next season. So he is playing for his Saints future that to one. make sure that the club makes uh, in, invoke that clause. Um, are we safe to say, if everyone is fit, Kev, that Blake into the 17 for Jake Wingfield will be the only change? Uh, I'd have thought so. Uh, I've written a team out here with well so, making. The oh. next question for you, then, if you, Kev, if you're oh. going to go into giving us your team, yeah. the big yeah. call is around the props. Um, yeah. Obviously, you assume Alex Walmsley starts. Yeah. Do you start George Delaney? Do you play Morgan Knowles there? Do you have Sioni and Delaney coming off the bench? Um, there's multiple combinations, isn't there? There are, but I think... We we always say this. We've said this a lot in the past couple of weeks. We go on patterns. This is what we. If if I'm trying to guess what Wellow's done, and that's what I've done in my team here, I'm going in patterns. So my team is as you'd expect across the back line. I'd have forwards, as you say, Alex Walmsley, Daryl Clark, George Delaney, Curtis Sirinan, Matt Whitley, Morgan Knowles. Morgan Knowles will then give James Bell that platform. So when Delaney comes off, Morgan Knowles goes into the middle, James Bell can come on. And and there was an interesting um, reply to me on Twitter X, whatever, saying, do we need to have a look at our interchanges and making sure we give Bell more time on the field? Do we need to look at our interchanges so we haven't got George Delaney and um, Alex Wormsley and Morgan Knowles all sat on the bench at some point? They're interesting and they're only questions that usually come up when you lose. Um, but I think the players who would come into their place, so it would be James Bell, it would be Sione Metalcher off the bench, it would be Joe Batchelor off the bench, are good enough to carry us forward. You, you could potentially, and again, it goes against the pattern, you could potentially start James Bell at 13 and just use Morgan Knowles as a traditional prop um, in that role, obviously coming on and off the bench. But do you lose the impact of James Bell? Do, is he as impactful if he starts games or is he better as Wello, I think, has, has suggested that he's better coming on to, to make that impact after Morgan Knowles has put the first punches in? I think, it'd be unfair, <laughs> I think it'd be unfair to say that he's not impactful when he starts. I mean, was his debut against Wigan on Good Friday? And he was all over the place, and not in a bad way. In a, he was covering ground, and everybody sat up and took notice and thought this this kid can play. Um, but I think we see the best of our team when he comes on and gives us that energy boost. We spoke about it an awful lot a couple of years ago when we had uh, Luke Thompson and um, Alex Swarmsley as your starting props, and then Matty Lees and Lou McCarthy Scarsbrook would come on, and that intensity would be maintained. He does that for us, it, and brings another dimension for a defence to, to have to deal with. Yeah, I want to see him on the park a little bit more. I wouldn't be against him starting at 13. I just don't see Paul Wellens doing that in a cup game like this. Looking ahead slightly, um, if we if we are successful this weekend, um, Hull FC next week, I know obviously um, they've lost um, Tony Smith, they've sacked him, and Tex Hoy and Manua Brown, is it? Of, New Brown, of, yeah. I've left the club as well. Um, if ever a game is a gimme, apart from London, it's probably Hull FC at home. You can clip that. Um <laughs> Is next week the opportunity where you potentially after this, this is the end of a, a big five game spell where we've played Leeds twice, Wigan, Catalan, obviously the quarter final on Sunday. Does next Friday give you that opportunity just to maybe change things around and give players a week off? Possibly, yeah. Um, 
it obviously depends once that um, disciplinary and injury front kind of is clear and we see who's available. It possibly does, and you have a look at a couple of the lads who um, who have been in and about the squad. So you Ben Davies, your T Ricks, and you know a Stevens. They could potentially come in, but um, that'd be something for us to discuss next week. I'd imagine, yeah. David. And obviously, Matty Lee's back from suspension, yeah. also. And Mark Percival. Yes, but again, I know Percy needs another week um, after the HIA. I think he was. Did you say he was chomping at the bit to play this week? Um, again, you can wrap him in cotton wool and just give him another week if you really need to. Yeah, if you wanted to. I, right. I'm just worried, and before we go on too much, I'm just worried about making too many changes. Even even against the whole team who are at the moment looking like cannon fodder, I'm still worried about making too many changes. I don't want to turn up to that game and watch us play a managed 24-12 win that we've been ahead for 75 minutes. They score two late tries and it kind of is one of them that you think, what's the point? Yeah. Okay. Warrington squad, Kev. Yeah, Zane Musgrove dropped out and Joe Philbin is back after um he was he missed last week due to uh HIA um protocol. Um they've been going all right, haven't they, Warrington? I'm I'm loath to say it, but they've been going all right. They have we're still going to be seeing the Warrington fans chirping on our timeline again, like they've, they're going to win the league again. Um, do they not remember last season where they were all dancing in the King's head? Uh, Daryl Clark's Barmy Army and how that turned out. Yes, they have won five out of seven in the league this season. But let me just name who they've beat, Kev. And, and you can only beat what's in front of you. Uh, Hull FC at home. Castleford at home. London Broncos. You could play them anywhere and you're going to hammer them. Um, they've had a good win uh, against Hull KR away. And they've had a good win um, away at Leeds. But again, Leeds are probably on a similar level to the likes of Cass and Hull as well. Um, they've come up against Catalans twice and come up short twice. So this is a another big test for them um, against us. Um, because essentially, aside from Hull KR, everybody else they beat are cannon fodder. It's it is a good yardstick for them to be fair. It really is. Um, be interesting to see if Ben Curry plays. I was before we started filming on the phone to one of my mates. He said that he's fifty fifty, um, and that he played quite well last week in the thirteen position. Um, and it'd be interesting to see if Toby King. Uh, gets a run out, or if it's going to be Stefan Ratchford again in the centres. Because um, didn't Sam Burgess have something to say about uh, Toby King and and his uh, his lack of game time? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to well, I'll try and find the quote if I can. Um, not Primrose yeah, and Blue TV, this Kev. I know it's not. Well, but when, you've put the Warrington squad up. Yeah, right. While you're looking for that. How many of that Warrington team get into a combined Saints wire 13? I'd argue Toby King. Ashton King. Ashton? Yeah. Yeah. Williams on his day. Ahead of who? Good point, yeah. No, I think I do think I do think Williams is a good player. It's just I'm not saying he's I, I, not, but who would you yeah. put him in ahead of? Yeah, good point. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Williams on a good day over Lomax on on his worst. I'd have Lomax, obviously. Yeah. Uh, um, I've got the Matty Ashton, Matty Ashton on one wing and Toby King as a centre, maybe. I, <laughs> And that goal, remember when we signed for Wigan and we made that uh, Toby King's useless joke or something like that? <laughs> yeah, well... By um, way, I mean, probably me. <laughs> yeah, you could say. Um, so, Burgess said, we'll get Joe Philbin back from concussion protocol, and maybe Toby King. He's got a soft tissue injury, so we'll see. He's a great player, and we'll welcome him back if he's free, but I'm sure he'll let me know later in the week. 
When asked about his chances of returning against St. Helens, Burgess replied, I don't know. I don't even know if Kingy knows. I'll see what he says early next week. Now, it's just the line of, uh, I'm sure he'll let me know later in the week. What a club. <laughs> it just rings alarm bells, doesn't it? So, we can guarantee starts then. Oh, a hat-trick. A hat-trick on Sunday, yeah. Whoa, Nailed whoa, whoa. Off. That's not the laugh far, Kev. <laughs> Um, is this has this game become harder for us after our loss last week? Um, my concern at the moment is we're not scoring enough points when we're on top. Yeah, I, I, I think that while we shouldn't necessarily beat ourselves too much, up too much about the Catalan defeat because we are, as we've said. Lewis Dodd getting that ball down away from us saying, what a win in a tough place to go. Um, Our territory and possession into points ratio just feels completely off. We did it against Wigan, where in the first half we, we took the game to him and didn't come away with the points that we should have. We did the same to Catalan. We need to write that. I don't know how we do that. I'm hoping that they're working on it on the on the training ground. But again, social media saw Peter Harvey who used to play for Saints saying that he'd like to see a bit more pressure taken off Lewis Dodd and get the kicking games through Johnny Lomax and Jack Wellsby. And it, it led me to thinking of how obviously charmed we were with Lachlan Coote playing at fullback. Now I'm not saying that I'd rather have Lachlan Coote there at all. But I think other players do need to chip in. I think Peter even said that even Alex Murphy wouldn't have taken on the whole of the kicking game. And he's lauded him as obviously the best seven that he's seen, or at least one of them. Um, so we just need to turn that territory and possession into making that scoreboard tick, because otherwise it keeps teams in games. Yeah. Um, predictions? Uh, Saints by 10. I'll go Saints by 16. Um, I've just seen on Twitter, by the way, 2,000 Warrington fans are coming across, which is tremendous to make the six mile journey for their cup final on Sunday. Um, hopefully, it'll be a, a decent turnout. I know we saw the blue wall at Headingley. Um, Saints should be slightly busier um, for a local derby on. Sunday, um, hopefully 11, 12,000 maybe. Hopefully so. Hopefully so. Uh, it'd be interesting to see, won't it, with all the ideas of, of bumping um, Challenge Cup attendances up. It's a Sunday afternoon kickoff. It's what people crave. They might want it at three o'clock, but it's a Sunday afternoon kickoff. Uh, hopefully people will uh, have a look at the weather and decide to get down there and uh, cheer the boys on. Um always a good atmosphere when we play Warrington as well um, and I, it, I know we've talked about the debate about there's a culture in rugby league where fans don't like paying for single games cup games but Warrington at home on a Sunday afternoon in a quarter final of the cup should be one if you've got the money and you can afford to um, isn't going to be one to miss another one not to miss Kev as a really good segue is the quarterfinal of the Women's Challenge Cup tomorrow. Um, St. Helens will take on Huddersfield at Fatto Heath Crusaders, Crusader Park, at 12pm. Um, only a couple of changes. England international Paige Travis comes back into the squad and Vicky Whitfield is welcomed back um, after undergoing knee surgery. Um, anybody who follows the women's team and, and Vicky on Instagram will have seen her diligent efforts Um to get herself fit and and go through the rehab. Um could be hard at times, but if she turns out tomorrow, we'll have achieved a, a goal of getting back into the team for the first run out of the year. Um should be a good game, Kev. Uh, we drew 16 all with them in pre-season. Um I know obviously there are a lot of um squad players we used in that game, but Saints find themselves two games from Wembley just like the men. Yeah. And hopefully they can um, hammer home. That I know they've been quite uh, quite good so far this season. Berry Salihi at fullback has 
has properly uh, shown why she's been signed up from Wigan and given that number one shirt, uh, really impressing the youngster there. Um, yeah, hopefully we can do it again. Why not? Absolutely. So if the weather's all right tomorrow, um, it is free entry down at um, Crusader Park to watch the women's quarterfinal, uh, although there will be buckets around the ground uh, for donations, uh, which will go to Fatto Heath um, for allowing the use of the facilities. Um, we were there for the reserve game the other week, Kev. A tremendous yep. clubhouse. Um, you can get a pint, you can stand on the balcony and you can cheer the women on to hopefully a victory, um, which will see them into the semi-final. And hopefully the men can follow suit on Sunday. Yep, fingers crossed. And hopefully a load go down there and support the women and Thatterweef. Uh, nice little partnership going there, isn't it? Yeah, might, I might stroll over myself tomorrow. Um, nice bit of rugby league on a Saturday afternoon. Can't beat it. Especially when Everton can't ruin my weekend because they're only playing <laughs> on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just looking, ooh, a smidge of rain due at 12 tomorrow, but nothing to stop you getting down there. Um, happy days. Right, Kevin, done and dusted. We will be back on Sunday for the instant reaction after the Challenge Cup quarter final. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you all very soon.